Today, on How to Cook with Bill Cook, I've got the craziest meatloaf you've ever seen. I don't have time to say all the words that describe this thing, so you just read the description or the title and that'll explain it. But uh, this thing's insane. and You're going to want to see how to make it. It's good. One of the cool things about this meatloaf recipe is the internal bacon stuffing. Since this is a rolled meatloaf, like a roulade, this gives us a really big option for what we're doing. You see a lot of people do like a uh, bacon weave on the outside. Uh, they call them the bacon bombs or meatloaf bombs or something like that. I don't know. Um, this is different because the bacon's on the inside. Why is that special? Um, well, you got to treat it differently. If you cook it on the outside, it'll just cook. On the inside, it won't cook. And that's disgusting. Uh, slimy undercooked bacon is not appetizing. So we have to cook it first. About 80, 85% of the way. We're going to do that on one of these racks like this right here. If you don't have one of these, get one of these. The greatest thing in the world. All right, so I have some fancy bacon from a recipe I just had. This is some maple black pepper or something or other with the awesome. It's good. It's from the butcher, special, super thick cut, awesome stuff. And I got a little bit extras. So I'm gonna add that in here. Get the uh, little bacon bits here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Okay, this is also going to do another thing. Ah, I poked myself. That's what happens when you're not paying attention fully. Uh, one of the things we're going to do with this is this is going to drip into this pan. This is going to help make our chipotle uh, bacon glaze thing on the outside of this as well. Oh, that's crazy, isn't it? Isn't that crazy? Is that crazy? I told you I was crazy. Didn't I? Didn't I tell you I was crazy? I told somebody I was crazy. I don't know. Might have been you. If you say I didn't, I believe you. You have no reason to lie to me, right? Yeah. Anyways, moving on. Huh. <laughs> uh, okay, lay out your bacon. Um, we are not going to make this into a weave. The reason we are not going to make this into a weave is no one's ever going to see it. No one's ever going to care. That's 15 minutes of your life you're never going to get back. Do you have an extra 15 minutes? I don't. Do you? I don't. Just uh, weaving this out here. Fast forwarding, I hope. Please tell me somebody's fast forward. This is weirdest bacon. It has this extra little bump on it. It's on all of these. I don't know. I don't know what that's from. I think the people on their last, on the next bacon thing or on one of these got screwed. So basically this just goes in your oven, 350, uh, until it's about 80% cooked. Uh, that'll be about so many minutes. I will add the thing here because I will tell you when it happens because this isn't the way I normally make bacon. I just don't. Um, I, I like I'm putting this in the oven. On to the next thing. Did I just fling water everywhere? Probably. I'm going to find a towel. Alright. On to the next thing. Okay. As you can see, our bacon's out. It's ready. It's looking good. Why wouldn't it be? Took uh, 32 minutes at 350. This oven's fairly accurate. Um, I've got it adjusted so that it's within a couple of degrees. So that seems to be a pretty good mark. This is cooked enough you could eat it, but it is still extremely pliable. The reason for that is we're going to roll this up. If you get this crispy, it no rolling. Don't do that. It's perfect. All right, let's set this aside as it's going to be one of the last things we need. Uh, and then uh, let's get on with the rest of this. All right, in order to make our meatloaf, you have to put stuff in it. Otherwise, it's just meat. So what's the loaf part? The loaf part is breadcrumbs, it's milk, it's eggs, it's tomato-y things, seasonings, onions, stuff like that. That makes it meatloaf. Um, that goes in this bowl with a couple pounds of meat and... Uh, 
let's get started. Of course, there's always all the uh, ingredients, not always, rarely, but in this case, uh, putting the ingredients down in the uh, description down there, or you can always go to billcooks.com and uh, eventually this will be up on there uh, when uh, the uh, guy in charge of doing that gets around to it. That's me. Sorry, I'm slow on that. Um, but hey, I'm here now. You can watch the video. It's in the description. All good. Cool. Let's get started. All right. <clears throat> First thing we need is breadcrumbs. Okay. That is a big slice of sourdough bread. Um, there's breadcrumbs in the filling. There's breadcrumbs in this. This is the binder. So breadcrumbs, two eggs, two pounds of meat, two eggs. How many eggs per pound of meat? I don't know. Don't ask me to do math. Okay. So there's that. I forgot to get a fork. Let me get a fork. Damn. I think the batteries are out on this magic snappy thing. All right. I'll just go get the fork. The magic snappy thing, no worky. All right. Mix up your eggs. Now milk, you usually use twice as much breadcrumbs to uh, the amount of milk that you have, roughly to make a panade. Um, I don't know how exactly I didn't measure this, plus I gotta break these down. So this is a third of a cup, which is the maximum amount you would really use. I'm gonna put about half of that in and see what I can get. Sure it gets me. This is flying by the seat of your pants cooking, which is how I cook, which is I call the, well, uh, good said. Uh, this is why I call the channel how to cook with an E on it, because it's not actual cooking, it's just the way I cook. So, God help us all. Um, but, most people don't measure stuff it too religiously once you get good at things and you get the used to it. But um, when, if you're just starting out, if you're just starting out watching this channel, good for you, okay? Cooking is a ton of fun and it's really enjoyable. And when you make the first meal that people go, oh my God, <laughs> that is the coolest feeling. When somebody says, oh my God, I would totally pay for this in a restaurant. Um, that's a cool feeling. When people tell you, you have to open a restaurant because this is amazing. Don't listen to them, it's a terrible idea. How do you make a small fortune in the restaurant business? Start with a big one. <laughs> Owning a restaurant is a terrible idea. Unless you have no other choice. If there is that bug inside you that says, I must do this, go for it. I mean, you gotta have restaurants and the whole thing. But uh, I hope you don't have a life because it's gone. You think kids take up a lot of your life? <laughs> no. All right. That looks like it's probably about the right amount. Okay, I'm glad I didn't use the rest. Okay. So, you want this wet, but not soupy. That's perfect. The bread will keep soaking this up at this point. So just kind of leave it. The reason why you're doing this there's all kinds of stuff on the internet. You can find out about a panade and what it does to meat and is a binder and the protein, you know, molecule chains and how it interrupts and keeps everything from tightening up too much. Um, it binds it together without locking it together, basically. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so next thing is, I put my seasoning over here. <laughs> Flavor. This is Super Secret Batch Prototype Billy Bob's Black Label Dry Rub. I can't tell you what's in it because hopefully, very soon, you'll be able to just uh, order this and buy it. Right now, I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of this in here. Yeah. That's about it. Okay, this is Okay. 
All right, there, that is super yummy. Okay, we're putting two tablespoons of tomato sauce. I made this tomato sauce myself. That's why it's in this weird little container. You basically just take a bunch of tomatoes, blanch them, roast them, take the skin off the whole thing, and then uh, stick them in a blender. And you get that. There you go. It's tastier when you use uh, fresh uh, tomatoes. Oh my God. Canned stuff's okay if you get the right stuff. Nothing compares to that. So we use about a tablespoon of tomato paste. This is in place of our ketchup ingredient. You can put ketchup in here if you want to. I won't tell anybody. But this works pretty good. I love this stuff because I only need a tablespoon. Now I can stick this back in the fridge and use it next time. If you have to open a can of tomato paste, that's a pain in the butt. So if you can find these, they come in a box, buy them. Uh, once it's open, it goes in the fridge. Store it in the fridge once it's open. Do not put it back in the cupboard. You do that, that's on you because I told you not to. All the medical bills and everything, that's on you. Because you're not going to feel well. All right, mix this up real, real good. Okay, this is getting pretty yummy here. Now the next thing we have to put in here is some onion because that's delicious. So I'm going to set this aside and uh, we're going to grate some onion. I mean, with like a box grater, we're going to take an onion. And grate it. It's the only way to get it small enough. So let me uh, switch this all out and be right back in one second. Grating an onion with a box grater. Maybe you've seen this done before. Maybe you haven't. We have a uh, medium to large onion. I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to peel the skin back on this. If you feel like just chopping this finely, doing it that way, by all means, I, I don't care. I'm making a mess. Now all those little uh, roots, you don't want that in here. When you start grating this, any contamination or any weirdness is going to make a mess. Okay, box cutter, onion, rocket surgery time here, folks. Do not put your hand into this. Switch it around backwards. Keep switching. Good enough. Look at that. Yep, there you go. That uh, looks about a half cup, doesn't it? Now we've got a big piece over here. I'm just going to run the knife through it real fast. So why do we do that this way? We do this because... I'm just going to chop this one real quick. This releases all the juices immediately. You're tearing open. An onion is made up of little cells. They're little water balloon sorts of things. I'm going to step back because uh, that's uh, giving off all of its uh, acidy wonderfulness at the moment. <laughs> uh, all the little cells are like little baby uh, sacs filled with liquid. Uh, when you do this, you tear every single one of those up and all of that liquid is right there. It's perfect and it really gets into your uh, stuff very, very quickly. Now, I am not going to need all of this for this, I need a half a cup. Now, I'm an expert measurer. That tells me that's half a cup. There we go. That's half a cup of onions. Let me mix that in. And she looks pretty darn good to me. Yep. You just want some oniony goodness in here. Okay, perfect. Mix this really well because from here on out, the meat goes in and then you're not gonna get a chance to mix this very well. Okay, so that's that. There is your meatloaf base. Doesn't that look amazing? Okay.
Eh. Waste not, want not. It's my theory. Okay. There. That's that. Save this for uh, something else here. Uh, in a moment, I am done with this. We'll clean up real fast, get the meat, and we'll get mixing. The final phase. All fingers on deck. If you only have nine fingers, that'll work just fine. Don't worry about it. But uh, I'd love to hear that story, because, dang. <laughs> yeah, it's very hard to make. All right, two pounds of meat going in here. Break this up. This is uh, just 80-20. You could use... It, you always say, well, why do they have 90-10 and things? If you ever knew an analysis, it's 80-20. This is one of those you could actually use a, uh, a leaner meat because you're putting a lot of other things in it. Uh, and you don't really want it to shrink that much. So if you wanted to use a 90-10 or a 95-5, <gasps> you could do it. You could totally do it. So just throwing it out there. Not that that stuff's cheaper, but if it's all you got... Go, hey, this works for meatloaf. I'm using it. Because meatloaf, one of the biggest problems with meatloaf is all the grease and everything. Okay, we are mixing. We are mixing, we're mixing. And you don't want to overmix. Do not grab this and just squeeze and, and rip this apart. We're gently tossing and separating and tossing and separating. We don't want to destroy this. So don't just mash the hell out of it keep it keep it loose keep it light get it mixed give yourself that little bit of a turn of the bowl fold it in there you go this is cold <sighs> hands ache really bad i have arthritis in my hands <laughs> this is awesome uh, I don't make meatloaf very much. There's a couple of reasons. I'm a big fat guy. Meatloaf isn't necessarily the healthiest thing in the world. I don't know why. But uh, that's one thing. And uh, the other thing is, uh, these hands don't work as well as they used to on cold stuff like this. Ow. So if you wear gloves, it can help. So the, the nitrile gloves or latex gloves or something like that, not a bad idea in this situation, just to protect your hands if you have a problem with cold. There you go. We're getting there. I don't see any more spots that look like they're obviously unmixed. Okay. When you're mixed, you're mixed. Let it be. Okay. That's what she should look like. Uh, let's see this little camera here. There you go. And uh, there you go. She's mixed. I'm going to wash my hands because it's... All the warm water is going to feel good. Then we're going to lay this out and get rolling. Well, I still have to make the stuffing, which we're going to fry in the pan real fast and do that. Uh, so this is going to go back in the fridge for a minute. Yay! So it'll be re really, really cold. And then we'll uh, do that. And then we're going to lay this out, stuff it, roll it. Then once it's rolled, then it has to go back in the fridge for about two hours and chill. Anyways, we'll get into all that. I'll wash my hands. Be back in a second. Okay, so here's the breadcrumb filling that goes on top of the bacon inside. This is two tablespoons of butter and about a half a cup of diced onions. A real half a cup of diced onions, not like the other, which was closer to a cup. But yeah, we're just going to saute these down until they're nice and soft and golden and lovely. You don't have to get them too dark. Uh, but we're going to cook this off a little bit. And then we're going to add a clove of minced garlic in here as well. And this is what it looks like when you're done. You add your cup of breadcrumbs. It's a mix of panko and plain breadcrumbs. Panko gives you texture. The plain breadcrumbs do like to soak up the bacony goodness and all the rest of the stuff. They add a lovely flavor. Now you're going to want to mix this around until you get all the butter and everything incorporated. The lumps will basically come out of it when you get it to the right spot. And we're just going to toast this. We're not looking to get it really, really dark. Just a little bit toasty. Um, it's already soaking up all the flavor. Uh, it won't take long, so you don't walk away from it. It's over a medium lowish heat. Uh, when it gets to this point, you're about done. It's perfect. 
And uh, we're going to turn the heat off, set this aside, let it cool for a couple minutes. Then we're going to throw a handful of mozzarella cheese inside. You can use different cheese if you want to, but that one works really, really well. It's basically a handful of grated cheese, maybe a half a cup or so, maybe a cup. Uh, depending on how much cheese you like. Don't over cheese it. All right. Final stage here uh, of assembly. We still have the glaze to make. Don't worry, I haven't forgot that. Uh, but we need to lay this out, uh, make it all pretty and wonderful. And then uh, we need to put the bacon down and the stuffing down and then roll it up real good. And what we're doing is we're using an extra wide piece of plastic wrap. This is restaurant stuff, basically. If you're looking for this, you're not gonna find it usually at the local grocery store. It's gonna be Costco or Sam's Club or restaurant supply, something like that. You might find it online, but probably not gonna find that at a regular grocery store because most people don't need that. We do. We're not most people, are we? Nope. All right. Meat onto plastic wrap. Boom. There you go. Your hands are going to get real messy here real quick like. Now, could we use a rolling pin? We might. You want to get this to a certain size. And that's a great thing about a cutting board like this because it has, you know, all these different pieces. You can kind of keep it in a straight line to a certain size. You want it basically the size of your uh, your bacon. So you take a strip of bacon here and lay this across and go, that's how wide we want this to be. And we want to make it as long as it needs to be to be about half an inch thick or something like that. So let's just move this out. And the rolling pin's not such a bad idea after all at this point. Because this is quite messy. Although, are you ever going to trust that rolling pin again? I don't know. Probably not. Okay, folks. This is why they pay me the big bucks. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Nobody pays me anything. All right. The end. This is the end we're going to go down to. Taper this off. So this end is going to taper off as we go because you want it to seal up nicely. You don't want a big ridge. You want it to sit like that. So taper that end. You can taper this end too if you want to, you know, fit in well. But we're just looking for a consistent thickness here that's going to give us a, a yummy goodness. And we want to keep it tight on the sides. So karate chop it like yay. Keep this in here. Plastic wants to come with it because it's plastic. I don't know why. I don't understand the philosophy or psychology of plastic. Why would I? It's above my pay grade. Look at that, folks. I ain't hard. You can do that. You can do that. Come on. Of course you can. Look at this. Looks like we have the proper amount of bacon. <gasps> what? Start rolling some bacon out here. Yeah, we are. Now, you see why a grid or, you know, doing the basket weave thing really isn't necessary because this is the inside. No one's ever going to see it. All you're going to have is wonderful, amazing bacony goodness. Now, you don't want the bacon to come all the way to the edge. You want to stop about yay far. So, tuck your bacon in it's where it needs to be. And you got all these little bits that will crumble off and find a place and Stick them in somewhere. There you go. Good. Okay, so we've got the strip down here. It's perfect. We've got uh, all this. Okay. There you go. Remember, we're saving the, uh, the drippings because that's going to go in our glaze so that we have that wonderful, awesome glaze. Uh, I'm going to touch this now because it doesn't really matter. Uh, now, the breadcrumbs, you saw me cooking these. I let them cool down for a few minutes and then tossed in about maybe half a cup, cup of uh, mozzarella cheese, grated mozzarella cheese. This uh, has a wonderful smell to it that I can't uh, begin to explain to you. The toasted bread and everything, oh, it's so amazing. Okay, let's get this on here. Now it's got the onions and the garlic, it was toasted in butter. We put a little bit of 
oregano flakes in there, a little ground oregano. Actually, it's oregano flakes, yeah. So that is a wonderful flavoring inside of here. This cheese is gonna give it a nice loveliness. This is gonna soak up a lot of the bacon because the bacon's 80% cooked. It's still gonna give off a little bit of juice, but it's not gonna be raw when you bite into this. That's kind of important. Okay, that is like I meant to. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna wash my hands because this is a mess. The plastic wrap is there for two very important reasons. One, um, now I don't have to clean the cutting board. Oh, okay, three reasons. Um, it is going to serve as the binder and make this into a loaf. You'll see when we wrap it. But right now, what this does is if we take this and pull it tight against itself, get going like this, you gotta kinda give it a, a nudge, get your plastic out of there, give it a nudge, like so. And once it gets started, you essentially hold this down and pull your plastic. You can see the gesture here, what we're doing. And now you know why we have that inch on the end, because this kind of moves everything down, kind of tuck your ingredients in, the bacon's trying to move on me, things like that. We're squishing this. Now the weight of it is also squishing the, look at this, this thing's ridiculous. The weight of this is, is thinning that outer layer down as well. That is not a bad thing necessarily. Okay, that is a loaf of meat. I'm gonna keep rolling this. Okay, we got that, we got that. Now this is a beautiful meatloaf roulade. Okay, try and pinch your ends if you can. This helps hold it in. Okay, this is going to go in the refrigerator. You can't even see this, hardly the seam where that is. It's amazing. This is gonna go in the refrigerator like this and it's gonna chill for a couple of hours. The reason for that is you want all this stuff to kind of bind together. If you don't do that, this ain't gonna work. It's gonna sit on the pan and gonna go and fall all apart. You don't want that. So two hours in the fridge, uh, chill this sucker. I might actually take another piece of plastic wrap and do a thing on it. Cause it's not quite as long as I wanted and it's a little loose on this end and I really want it tight. Ideally you want to pick this up and spin it and that makes it super tight. I try and pick this up and spin it. Well, maybe I can just do this. There we go. See, that is getting much, much tighter. See that, it's binding up. Everything's coming together, it's beautiful. Okay, there we go. Pinch little bits, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna put this on a pan. I'm gonna stick it in the fridge, two hours. And then we're gonna come back, we're gonna stick it in the oven for about 90 minutes. And we're gonna make our glaze at that point. So stick around, there's a lot more to do. Okay, see you in a minute. We're uh, approaching the finish line on this meal. I'm excited. That has been in the fridge for two hours. It's amazing. It's nice and firm. That should make this much easier. I'm going to grab my uh, paring knife because we're going to slit this and we're going to do this very gently and delicately. So my seam is right here. I basically want to slit this right along where the seam is. Right here, you can't really see it because it's on this side. Whose fault is that? Sorry, I can't do everything around here, people. Okay, so we're going to take and gently roll this over. Give it a scoochy back towards the middle, a little scoochy boochy there. Yep. And that is a golden meatloaf. I love it, I love it, I love it. 
Okay, this is going in the oven. Uh, we're starting it off at uh, 400 to put a bit of a crust on it. Uh, I'm not glazing it yet because I want to put a crust on it. Uh, we're going to put it at 400 for 20 minutes, put, a, put the crust on it. Then we're going to come back and put the glaze on it, knock it down to 350 and cook it for the rest of the time, which is about an hour and a half. So gives us about another, what, hour and 10 minutes after we've glazed it. Uh, sitting here, it's just getting warmer, so I'm going in the oven. So one of the cool things about this is the Chipotle glaze that's going on top. What is in the Chipotle glaze? I'm glad you asked. Um, well, it's ketchup because it's meatloaf. Uh, it's Chipotle because it's Chipotle. And uh, a little bit of bacon grease. And one other secret ingredient, you'll have to stick around to find out exactly what that is in a minute. First, let's start with our ketchup. Why do I feel like a game show host suddenly? Tell them what they've won. Well, half a cup of ketchup. This one, this bottle's almost finished. So you get the wonderful ketchup farting sounds. Oh yeah, everybody loves ketchup farts. Except when they're, you know, real farts. Wasn't me, I didn't do it. This is good, uh, good entertainment, isn't it? See, the thing is, I have a bet with that guy that I can make you sit here and watch me squeeze ketchup out of a bottle for 20 minutes. <laughs> Pretty funny, huh? Okay, let's switch. Wow, still making the fun sounds. That's a new bottle. I don't know. Okay, half ketchup. Close enough. Again, it's just the glaze on top. It's not, uh, it's not rocket surgery. All right, there you go. That is that. Boom. Chipotle in a can with adobo. Now, a lot of times when you do this, you're looking for the chipotle itself. I am not, I'm looking for the adobo. It has all the flavor, none of the uh, gritty uh, bits. So, get as much adobo out of this as you can without getting a chipotle. If you get a little chipotle, it's fine, but try to get the adobo out of it. I will be putting this in a uh, container and stick it in the freezer, marking it as Chipotle, so that I know what it is later. And I can come back and uh, just take some out. It's perfect. So this is a small, I guess they call them teaspoons or something like that. There you go, that's just basically it. I don't want this to kill anybody. Chipotle's can be a little spicy. So, try not to kill anybody. All right, so that's gonna go into a uh, thing. I'm gonna do the next little bit here. All right, see this? This was the pan that had our uh, bacon on it. Look at some of this bacon grease. There's bacon grease here, you see this? There's bacon grease. Yeah, you don't need a ton. But this is going to give it that wonderful bacony goodness. Yeah. That happens. That's bacon grease in here. <laughs> I'm a bad man. <laughs> oh, don't tell my cardiologist. <sighs> I'm a bad man. <laughs> Okay, there's one other secret ingredient to this to make it super yummy, and I'm gonna grab it right now. Here's the secret ingredient. See, aren't you glad you waited? I'm so proud of you. We've come so far together, haven't we? Okay, tablespoon. 
two tablespoons. Woo-hoo-hoo! That's going to be yummy. There, set that over there for now. That looks pretty awesome, but... You know, I think you deserve a double secret bonus ingredient. Hold on. Wait for it. You're going to like this one. Ready? Ha! Look at that. Maggie. Now, Maggie is delicious. Some people call it uh, Mexican soy sauce or Mexican Worcestershire. It is a beef-based product that uh, is... Well, it says it adds umami. It's right on the bottle, so it has to be true. It's got a flavor to it. <sighs> you can put that in a michelada. <laughs> it's very good. Uh, it goes great in this because it adds that wonderful umami. And uh, that's basically what you want in a barbecue sauce sort of thingy here. So we're going to mash up our brown sugar everything else this all ready to go you can see the color has changed a beautiful shade of brownish red mm -hmm. I don't know you can call that beautiful let's taste it see where we're at yeah yes yeah, that's pretty good. I like it. That'll work. Perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's got that uh, little, little bit of a uh, smoky bacon-y thing with the, uh, you can taste this ever so slightly. And it's got that nice little tingle. It's not super hot because I didn't put a ton of Chipotle in. It's not super hot. So uh, don't worry about killing anybody with that. Um, but uh, yeah, that'll work. So we're going to put that on in... What do we got? 10 more minutes. And then uh, I can finally relax for a minute because it's just going to cook for an hour. And then I can clean the kitchen. Yay! All right. Let's uh, get to it. And uh, I'll be right back when there's something else to do. All right. Bye. All right. So it's been uh, 20, 22 minutes, something like that. This is, I'll show you here. You can see from here with the thing. This is our meatloaf. It's cracked a little bit, as you can see there. Eh, what are you going to do? We're going to glaze it. So what we're going to do, it's got a little bit of a crust on it there. She's ready to go. Hopefully I put that in the right place. We'll find out together a little bit. All right. You know before I do. All right. Glazing. Yeah, you could use a brush. Why? Why? Spoon works just fine. I'm gonna get in some of these nooks and crannies, some of these bigger spots, some of this beautifulness. It's gonna ooze down. We want to use the glaze. We are not going to come back and reglaze this. So get your glazing on. I'm getting the back side here. You can't see the side, but trust me. You can trust me, right? Come on. We're old friends. No, I can't see that side. Did I, did I get everything on that side? <laughs> That's right. You can't answer me. Oh, don't touch the pan. Do not touch the pan. The <laughs> pan's hot. I don't know why. It's just in the oven at 400 degrees. That's weird. Woo, did it again. Okay. She's glazed. That's glazed meatloaf. We got a little bit extra. See if I can get it to puddle on top. It'll ooze itself down. It'll ooze on down, ooze on down the loaf. I'm not gonna sing that because I don't sing and it's weird. There, that's gonna make a oozy goozy mess. <gasps> There's a spot there you couldn't see. All right, that's that. I'm gonna grab oven mitts, stick this back in the oven for another hour and uh, hour and ten minutes, then, then we eat. But we gotta wait until this is cooked. So I'm gonna do that. Oven's down to 350 now. 
So she's just gonna coast the rest of the way. And uh, there she is. <laughs> Nothing left to do now but clean the kitchen. And it's five o'clock somewhere. Sounds good to me. All right, I'll let you know when it's done. All right, see you in a minute. Bye. The easiest meatloaf in the world to make is finally completed. Hey, no one ever said good was easy, right? So it was in the oven exactly uh, 80 minutes and it came up to temp at 165. So uh, she's done. You can see the glaze on this thing is absolutely remarkable. And it is time to do a little slicey slice. Now I'm not gonna put my hand against it because I'm not a crazy person. It's ooey and gooey and wonderful. Holy crap. I don't know if you can see that in the camera over here. Uh, yeah. So that's what we were uh, shooting for. That's what we got. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited because this thing's delicious. Um, this one turned out better than any one I've ever done. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, been hit and miss on the... Uh, <laughs> it's not the easiest things in the world to make. Can you imagine this on a sandwich? Oh, when I do that, I will take a picture. You got to go to my Instagram to see that because I'll post it there. It's uh, Bill Cooks. That's C-O-O-K-E-S. -E Cooks. And we are slicing and dicing and getting ready for eating. Oh, yeah. I am so excited. This thing is amazing. It's incredible. And uh, look at how cool this thing is. That is so bitchy. I love it. So uh, there you go. The uh, world's simplest meatloaf. No. The world's best meatloaf. There you go. It's worth the effort. Uh, you should be making this thing at least once because you got to know what it tastes like and you're not going to find this on a menu. You're not going to find this anywhere. You're only going to find this in your kitchen if you make it or if you come over here and I make it for you, but you're better odds of making it yourself. So there you go. Crazy meatloaf. Delicious, wonderful, I'm eating this now. So thanks for watching, like, subscribe, the bell, all that good stuff, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.